Hello everyone, welcome back to Dagkin Cuts. So today we'll be taking a look at a problem from the China Math Olympiad, which just took place on 26 and 27 of November. Now this Olympiad is one of the hardest national Olympiads out there, and it's used to select the China national team for the next year, hence the name CMO2026. Problem number 4 is going to be a combinatorics problem, and while it doesn't involve complicated mathematics, it is actually a good test of your ability to reason through uh, abstract situations. So without further ado, let us take a look at this interesting problem. Okay, so this is a combinatorics problem and the problem statement is as follows. Now it's a bit long, but I will break it down uh, as we go through the problem statement itself. There are 30 colors of cards with 70 cards of each color. Initially, any 70 cards are chosen and arranged from top to bottom into a stack. So over here, we have our 70 cards. And basically this part about uh, there being 70 cards of each color available uh, in our universe, is basically saying that if we want, we can actually even have all the cards in our final stack being all of the same color. So in other words, uh, for our 70 cards, we can choose from the 30 colors available with no uh, restriction. Okay, now let's take a look at what is meant by operation. One operation is defined as follows. From the bottom 20 cards, choose a card X whose color does not appear among the top 50 cards. So for example, if yellow, uh, there's a yellow card here and it doesn't appear in the top 50, then I can choose this card as my X. Next, from the top 50 cards, choose a card Y whose color appears at least twice among the top 50 cards. So for example, if orange appears at least twice in the top 50, then I can pick uh, one of them as my Y. Note that it's perfectly fine for orange to be in the bottom 20. There's nothing uh, stopping that. It just needs to appear at least twice in the top 50. And finally, you extract X and insert it back immediately above Y, so like this. Now note that if you do this, all these cards over here get bumped down by one position. And note specifically that the lowest card in the top 50 then ends up bumped into the bottom 20. So the thing here is you are supposed to repeat the above operations until no such X can be selected. This question has two parts prove that the number of operations that can be performed is finite. Secondly, find all possible initial situations and operation methods, uh, or rather for all possible initial situations and operation methods, find the maximum possible number of operations. Okay, so quite clearly, if you can prove the second part directly by having a finite number and showing that it's the maximum, you will have proven the first part. And in fact, you can directly go and do the second part. But I'll be going through the first part uh, as a standalone solution first to help provide a better understanding of the problem statement. So this is going to be sort of like my motivation for the second part of the, the problem. So without further ado, let's take a look at the first part first, which is to show that you can only perform finitely many such operations. Now, for a problem statement like this, a very common technique is to come up with a monovariant, which is basically a quantity that strictly decreases or strictly increases, and you show that it's bounded in the direction of change. Then this will prove that the number of operations must be finite. If you are not familiar with the concept of monovariant and invariant, do take a look at my previous video covering this concept. It turns out to be really useful here. But before finding out the monovariant, we are going to define a very important quantity, uh, or rather a very important term. So we are going to say that a card in the top 50 is Y eligible if there's at least another card in the top 50 having the same color. Basically, it means that card is allowed to be selected as a Y. Now, of course, this definition uh, is applied at a, for a particular state. Then after doing an operation, uh, the definition have to be refreshed again. Okay, so. This is basically for a given state, uh, what are the Y eligible cards? And the rest are considered Y ineligible. 
Now, in my diagram, I'm going to denote the Y eligible cards with this green thing. It doesn't mean that they are of the color, uh, single color green. I just have to distinguish between eligible and ineligible by using green and gray. Okay, so with that definition aside, let's now try and understand the operation first before we construct our monovariant. So the operation involves picking an X and a Y and then inserting X above Y. Now, what happens when we do that? First, focus on the card that is inserted. Let's say we pick a yellow card and we insert above Y. The inserted card, after the insertion, the inserted card must be Y ineligible. Why is that so? Well, if yellow is picked here, it means that yellow is not in the top 50. So after insertion, it is the only yellow. Therefore, it is Y ineligible. And in fact, it will continue to be Y ineligible as you continue the operations uh, until it leaves the top 50 if ever. Now, I mean, this leaving the top 50 part is just a annoying statement I have to keep writing uh, because I only define Y eligibility for the top 50 cards. But basically, if I insert, uh, let's say, yellow here, then I can not pick another yellow ever in the bottom 20 to insert again until this uh, initial yellow drops out. So this will continue to be the only yellow uh, as long as it stays in the top 50, right? So that means it will remain Y ineligible throughout its time in the top 50. And this is quite useful, okay? But how about the rest of the cards? Now, for the other top 50 cards, uh, if they were Y ineligible before the insertion, after the insertion, it will also remain Y ineligible. And that is because the card that is inserted is yellow. None of this here is yellow. So the Y ineligible one cannot suddenly have a new card that is of its same color added to it because you are inserting yellow, right? So uh, it will remain Y ineligible. But for the Y eligible cards, uh, it's a bit more elaborate. Now, a few things can happen. Okay, so after insertion, let's look at the height of the card. Firstly, it could stay at the same height because uh, basically all those that are above the insertion point are not moved. It could drop a height of 1, including the possible scenario of being pushed into the bottom 20. So uh, basically all these that are below the insertion point will be pushed down by a height of 1. And notice that this must happen to at least one eligible card because the X is inserted immediately above a Y eligible card. Okay, there's one more scenario that could happen. This is a bit tricky to spot, but a Y eligible card could actually become ineligible, even if it stays in the top 50. Why is that so? Uh, from concreteness, let's say you have two orange cards here. So the two orange cards are initially Y eligible, right? And let's say the one of the orange cards is actually at the bottom here and it gets pushed to the bottom 20. Suddenly, the other orange card is the only orange that is left in the top 50 and it suddenly deactivates and becomes ineligible. So this could also happen. Uh, it's a bit tricky to spot, but if you miss that out, then this part will, uh, of the proof will have a flaw. Okay, so we've a good understanding of what happens to the various cards. This suggests that actually we should take a look at the concept of height a bit more closely. So I'm going to define the height uh, among the top 50 cards as 1 to 50. And then for completeness, everything in the bottom 20, I'm going to just call it height 0. And based on our discussion, it's natural to define our monovariant to be capital H, which is defined as the sum of heights of Y eligible cards. Why is this a good quantity to look at? Firstly, after operation, we do not create any new Y eligible cards. Remember, the inserted card is ineligible, and ineligible card stays as ineligible. On the other hand, for eligible cards, you could get deactivated. That lowers the height, the sum of heights. Or you could have uh, cards being bumped down, and this must happen for at least one card. So this tells us that capital H actually strictly decreases with each operation and therefore only a finite number of operations can be performed because capital H is obviously greater than or equal to zero. So this concludes the first part of the proof. Now, 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this proof is completely not even needed for the second part. So you might wonder, are we wasting our time? But actually looking at the concept of why eligible cards and the height is going to play, play an important role in the second half of the proof. So the time is not wasted over here. Let's take a look at the second part of the problem. So to recall, what you need to do now is among all the possible initial scenarios like the 70 cards and the ways to choose your operation, we need to find the maximum possible number of operations. Okay, to do this, we are going to need to continue to look at a string of uh, more observations. Now, the most important concept for this part of the proof turns out to be the lowest Y eligible card. So let's make a few observations about that card first. Firstly, when there are K Y ineligible cards among the top 50, the height of the lowest Y eligible card is less than or equal to K plus one. Uh, this is quite straightforward to see. Basically, if you stack all your K ineligible cards at the bottom of the top 50, then your lowest card will be at height K plus one and any moving of the ineligible card that is higher up will only serve to lower the height of this uh, lowest Y eligible card. Okay, quite straightforward. Now the other thing that to note is uh, with each operation, the lowest Y eligible card drops a height of one, uh, possibly becoming height zero. Then of course you need to refresh your definition and there will be a new lowest y eligible card but i'm saying like before insertion let's look at a lowest y eligible card its height is going to drop by one with each operation no matter what okay so some y eligible cards may stay in position but the lowest one will definitely drop by a height of one now the thing is also that if the lowest y eligible card drops to height zero means it crosses the threshold the boundary here the number of ineligible cards increases by at least one. And this is because you are inserting a card that is ineligible and you just lost an eligible card out of the top 50. So uh, K definitely increases by one there. And as we discussed earlier, it's also possible for some eligible cards to become deactivated. But the point that is most important is it increases by at least one. And lastly, the maximum number of why ineligible cards you can have in the top 50 is 29. This is because there are only 30 colors. You cannot have all 30 as in, ineligible because then what would be the colors of the remaining cards, right? Okay, so what does all these four observations mean? Let me try and summarize it in a different way. So K here represents the number of uh, Y ineligible cards. Over here, I indicated the number of operations that from, from this current state, what is the maximum number of operations that could happen before that uh, y, uh, the lowest y eligible card drops to zero. So as we notice, like for example, if k is two, you can only perform at most three operations before that lowest card drops to zero. Uh, notice for 29, you cannot even perform any operation because in the case where k is 29, all 30 colors would be in uh, present in the top 50. So none of the bottom 20 will be a valid X. Okay, so now the last thing to notice is if you perform this, uh, all these operations until you drop the lowest Y algebra card to zero, you are forced to move to the right to a higher K. Okay, so these are all the observations summarized here. So it seems natural that, oh, maybe what you should do is start here do one operation, then you are forced to here, you are forced to write, but maybe you are forced to this scenario, you do two operations, you are forced to k equals two now, you do three operations and so on. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is not one plus two plus three until dot dot plus uh, 29. Uh, this is not quite the solution yet. There's still one more restriction that we haven't discovered. And what is this restriction? It involves the bottom 20 cards. So the key is that actually uh, we should study what happens when an eligible card crosses the threshold to the bottom 20. 
To do this, we are going to define a new term. We say that a cut in the bottom 20 is junk if it forever cannot be picked as x. Okay, so why is this junk important? Because if you end up um, having all 20 being junk here, it's basically game over, right? And the thing is, when a y eligible card drops into the bottom 20, it becomes a junk card. With a caveat that I will elaborate in a bit, but it's quite uh, understandable, right? Basically, or, or rather it's quite intuitive. Like let's say we are looking at orange as one of the colors, and orange was initially above the threshold and then it just got pushed down. Now, obviously, since it's, it was Y eligible, it means there are other orange cards in the top 50. So therefore, at the moment after it was pushed down, this could not be picked as X because there's still orange in the top 50. Now, why is there a caveat here, which is that if you are actually very sharp, you would argue that, hey, maybe further down the line, as more cards get added, these two orange might also be pushed down. So eventually you have all three orange in the bottom, no more orange at the top, then orange will become uh, possible as an X uh, again, right? But the thing is, let's study this carefully. We can look at, okay, this orange is now pushed down. Now we have one more last orange. Notice that the last orange cut, right, is actually going to be Y ineligible, uh, when it's the only remaining one in the top 50. So at the moment where it crosses the line, it's actually crossing the line as a Y ineligible card. And what we can do is at that moment, uh, orange is now possible to be picked as X, but we can always say that the last orange is the one we will by default pick as X. And we do not actually pick the previous orange cards that were pushed down. And it, once that uh, orange card is, let's say, ever selected as X and moved upwards, it will again be ineligible and so on. So we, it's possible without loss of generality to say that whenever the Y eligible version is pushed down, we just forever uh, condemn it and say that it will never be picked as X. Uh, yeah, so this is a bit subtle, but make sure you understand why we can uh, do this uh, caveat and make this statement true. But the important takeaway then is that we can only have a maximum of 20 crossings of Y eligible cards across the boundary. Because once we do 20 crossings, we will now have 20 junks uh, inside here and we can no longer pick any X. So what does this mean? Back to our summary, we could not uh, very freely just take all the 29 numbers here. We can only pick a maximum of 20 of these numbers because once you cross the uh, boundary with a Y eligible card, Yes, you go to the right and you can pick any of the numbers on the right, but you create a junk and you can only do this 20 times. So you can only pick 20 of these numbers and obviously the best case scenario then is to take the highest 20, which gives a sum of 390. Okay, so now that we have this bound, can we do a construction that gives us 390 operation? Well, if you understood the proof that we have gone through, it's actually quite easy to come up with the construction then, which basically you have uh, colors 1 to 29, you put one card of each color at the bottom of your entire stack and then for the remaining 41 cards above that, you just use the last color. And then for each operation, you take any valid X and you insert it above the lowest valid Y or the lowest Y eligible card in the top 50. Yeah, so uh, you can go through this reasoning yourself, but if you understood the earlier proof, this should be quite straightforward to check. Phew. So this has been a long problem, but there's actually no sophisticated formulas or mathematics involved. Just a lot of careful reasoning. So I hope you enjoy this problem. I think it's beautiful when there's a problem like this that doesn't involve heavy machinery. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.